हाँ हाँ ओके सो हेलो एवरीवन टुडे आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग फर्स्ट ऑर्डर मोशन मॉडल फॉर इमेज एनिमेशन पेपर व्हिच वाज पब्लिश्ड इन न्यूरिप्स 2019 सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द मेन आइडिया ऑफ दिस पेपर इज टू uh approach the task of generating a video sequence so that an object of in, uh, object in a source image is animated according to the motion of a driving video so here we can see some examples of it as we have a driving video and a source image and we can uh, apply them in such a way that the source image will uh will change it uh, animate itself uh using the motions in, from the driving video so the key contributions uh for this paper i summarized as improve existing methods to support complex motions and also it outperforms state of the art models on diverse be benchmarks and um uh, let's uh let me share some related work so uh before this model uh already existing models require pre-trained models to extract object specific priors such as uh for example we discussed 3 dmm parameters of a face or or some key point detect uh detectors uh before applying the model which is which was costly because it required ground truth labels and not applicable for arbitrary objects which means that for every object we want to infer we need to uh we need to provide some training uh training uh examples so uh but uh before uh first order first order motion model monkeynet from the same author was presented in uh, cvpr19 which was the first object agnostic deep model for image animation which means it doesn't rely on labels or prior information and it doesn't need some uh, any tra uh, specific training procedure uh, for uh, each object instance so um, uh, monkeynet encodes uh, information via key points learned in a self supervised way uh, but uh it has some limitations which me uh which are it uh generates low quality uh animations when the uh motion uh, change in the motion is big for example uh ah uh, yeah okay so uh, this is the driving media and these are the source image and if if we, uh if you look closely to these two they looks normal but when the uh, motion becomes little bit uh, bigger than just the uh, front uh, motion uh, it started it starts to generate some occlu uh, some occlusions and uh, it, it uh, the quality of the generated image uh, generated image becomes uh, less and less going to to the right so this is the main uh, limitation of the monkey net and uh authors present first order motion model which is actually built upon the monkey net and it can animate multiple object categories and doesn't require any object models to provide some uh, object specific information so these are some examples on uh different data sets uh uh different data sets using first order motion model as we can see um in this case we have a driving video uh, a frame from the driving media and source image and applying first order motion model results in a uh, high quality uh, high quality uh, image reconstruction and uh, at the same time uh, we can apply the same model to the di two different object instances so let's get into the uh, uh, the method that authors uh provided so the uh, uh, brief overview of the architecture is that they uh, it, it, we can divide it into two separate uh two separate uh parts which uh, in which one is the motion module uh, motion module and the next uh, the second one is the generation module and uh for the case of motion module we input the source image 
uh, and the driving video uh, as 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 a frame. And we in, in, within the motion module we have uh, two uh, encoder based uh, uh, architectures, which uh, in which first architecture extracts some uh, key, which is called key point detector, which extracts key points and affine transformations of uh, using driving frame and the next uh, uh, model um, uses that information to generate uh, dense motion uh, uh, dense motion information and and the occlusion map and then generation module uses that information to reconstruct the uh, final image so let me try to give more uh, information about uh, individual uh, aspects of this architecture, which is in the motion module, we have a key point detector, which uh, detects uh, key points uh, in the driving frame. And also with uh, along with those key points, he detects some affine transformations with, which are uh, needed to um, map a uh, more richer motion information. And uh, the main idea in this, uh, uh, in this uh, module is that they don't uh, directly make a transformation from the driving frame into the source frame, but they use some abstract, uh, this is the technique used by the authors. So they use some abstract uh, image frame from the driving, uh, driving media and use that frame to first uh, uh, to first uh, uh, estimate the uh, key point changes in the driving frame and then use that information to map it to the source frame. And the technique here is that the uh, reference frame is just an abstract concept and it never explicitly computed and cancels out in their derivations. And we cannot actually visualize it. Uh, moving on, so it's like I wanted to show some uh, simpler uh, example here uh, to explain what I just said. So instead of uh, mapping the transformation from directly from D to S, they use some reference uh, frame and then map a key point from the driving frame into the reference frame. And after that, they map it to the so uh, source image. And uh, in this case, ZK is Z, uh, ZK is um, a key point, a point location in uh, in uh, S and D and some uh, any frame X, and P is uh, point locations in the reference uh, post space. This is just uh, the uh, point convention used by the authors, and this is the. Um, uh, mathematical formulation, and they have a huge list of the uh, derivation, mathematical derivations, which I uh, didn't uh, include. But uh, maybe if needed, I can provide it uh, later. So moving on, then using that uh, information, uh, uh, authors use a dense motion network, which is which takes that information uh, generated by the key point detector and uh, uses it to uh, output dense motion field, which is used to uh, warp the uh, source image in such a way that it will best resemble the uh, driving frame. And then also it uh, outputs some occlusion map, which is needed because when we change the driving frame, uh, the source image, uh, uh, according to the driving frame, uh, we have some discontinuities uh, during the transformation. For example, when, uh, as I said before, when uh, a, a source in the source image object has, object is some uh, human face and it changes according to the driving frame, but when it changes, it turn rotates. And there is a background, which is, which which doesn't uh, 
uh, which doesn't exist in the source. In that case, authors use something called occlusion maps to uh, to inpaint that background from the uh, inpaint that background. Yes. So this is the uh, and they call it occlusion aware uh, image generation. Uh, so to sum up. During generation of a video sequence, we can have motions that contains parts of object in D, which weren't in S. For that, we need uh, in painting instead of warping. So it's just occlusion map just uh, tells the module to uh, let it, it know when to use warping and when to do in painting. And then during the training, they uh, utilized uh, several losses, which first of them is the reconstruction loss, which is based on the perceptual loss. And we discussed it last time during the pi renderer paper. And the authors used multiple resolutions uh, such as here. And then the uh, formula for the reconstruction loss is this one. And they also used the equivariance loss, which ensures that the model will be consistent with key point predictions with respect to uh, known geometric transformations. Uh, so moving on uh, for the results part. Uh, so authors used uh, during training, they used several uh, benchmark data sets, which are Vox, Celeb, U UVA, Nemo, and Bayer Robot. Uh, pushing data set. And also during, in this paper, they proposed a high resolution Tai Chi HD data set. And they claim that this might be the uh, new benchmark data set for uh, image reconstruction task. And these are some results. So for the evaluation metrics, they used the L1 distance, average key point uh, distance, uh, missing key point rate, and uh, average Euclidean distances. And uh, so in the paper, authors state that the two uh, state-of-the-art models known at that time were X to phase and MonkeyNet, and the performance of the uh, first-order motion model outperforms uh, those state-of-the-art models of that time by by a lot. So this is these are some uh, quant qualitative results. And as a conclusion, uh, so authors proposed image animation technique based on key points and lack local affine transformation. And their uh, model did a state of the uh, state of the art performance on diverse uh, benchmarks. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. The chance probably